Okay, the first thing that I'd like to do is show you how to pull in images. I'm going to start with digital images, either from a CD or from a, um, a digital x-ray uh, server that you have on site, if you have your own digital x-ray system. So I already have the client in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit new evaluation. Okay. So with new evaluation, the first thing we must decide is what date was the x-ray taken? Or actually, I should say, let's find the, fir the patient first. Uh, his last name, if you would know it, is Ferentelli. So let me go ahead and search. There I am. And it's very important that if they misspell the name on the digital x-ray CD or uh, in your digital x-ray system, we have to... Um, we have to locate that. Uh, they may spell, if they spell Joseph, it's going to have a hard time finding it. So you got to pay attention there, have your staff pay attention when they shoot the, those x-rays. We hit new evaluation. The date on this film, we're going to say it's July of 2011. And I want to say it was, we'll just say it was the 13th. Okay. Now what type of exam do we want to say? I'm just going to say it's an initial x-ray. Okay. What date is the exam that we would want to do. Is it going to be the same data service or are these overreads or are you going back and doing them? Most times you're going to have the same dates of service unless you're getting your x-rays from an outside uh, facility. Um, even if you don't have time to digitize them, you're looking at those x-rays anyway um, before that patient leaves. At least I assume you should be uh, to make sure there's no tumors, fractures, infections, things like that on the x-ray. So you're still reading it, you're just not documenting it. So I would keep the same date if you are doing this, um, you know, pretty much right as you go along. Um, <clears throat> so, with that being said, we must, across the top, choose at least one x-ray that we know is in that series. So I'm going to choose a lateral cervical. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this DCM browse with the glasses. When I open up this DCM browse, you have the, the patient's name up here, first and last name, the date range. Notice with the date range it's selected a date before um, that we did to current. This is the x-ray server path that I have, but if I had a CD from say a, um, um, a hospital or radiology center, all I would do is click here and basically just browse to the computer and browse to that CD drive, which on this computer I don't even have a CD drive so I can't browse it. I'm going to use the x-ray server. Now, uh, we pull in images from an image store or from uh, images exported as uh, .dcms or .dic, DICOM image files. So if all that information is correct, we would hit search. But I want to show you something here while we're in this feature. It's really important. If this person's name was Joseph, right, and I hit search, it's an, a lot of times it won't find everything if by chance I... Um, well, here I had Joseph uh, as I'm looking at original films. Let me go ahead and choose a different path just so I, I can show you because those are recent films that were just taken this year and I did spell my name Joseph. Um, so let me go into my sample x-rays and so this is kind of mimicking my x-ray server if you will. So we're going to go in here and I have Joe's spine here. Uh, let me see if I have, yeah, we'll go ahead and do it that way. Now, if I have Joseph, I believe I put Joe in on the x-ray machine. So if I hit search, notice it says no images can be found. Okay, so that's what I wanted to exemplify there. So if this was your x-ray server and they put in the wrong information, you're not going to be able to find those images. So one of the things that you can do is if you're not so sure, let's go ahead and just put Joe. And we could always shorten the last name because it's going to look to that location. Uh, if it's your image store, obviously on my, I don't have a digital x-ray set up here in my <clears throat> my house where I'm recording this video. So what we're doing is I'm just mimicking what would happen. So I put Joe and Ferentelli search within that date range and then hit search and look at that. It found images. Now <clears throat> depending on what x-ray machine you have, it's going to usually tell you the creation date that the CD was burned um, or saved, tell you the first and last name. Uh, it may tell you the x-ray views. A lot of times it won't. It'll just tell you a, a path because many x-ray machines just give you like a long string of numbers. We just hit select all and we hit OK. Now importing these images, <clears throat> so
sometimes you'll have a, a, a ability to do different grayscales, and I'll show you that in just a second. Um, actually, I'll show that into you in another view. What your staff needs to do is simply map what these are. Now, everything I'm showing you to this point, a, a CA could absolutely do. So I'm going to say this is an AP cervical. And notice that it's the patient facing us. We always want to have the right facing us on our left side. Unlike what we were taught in chiropractic college, we're doing this as medical views. And I will explain why as we go. Um, so this is an AP cervical. We're going to hit load. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to load all of them for you so you can see how we do this. This is not an AP lumbar. It's really an AP modified Ferguson. We'll go into that if you don't know what view that is. It's basically a tube tilt up. Here's an APOM. So all I'm doing is my staff member would just go and select what these x-ray views are. So that's an AP thoracic. And these are all my spine. So you're going to see how bad my spine is from the years of powerlifting and exercise that I beat myself up when I was in sports. There's my hyperlordosis of my neck. So lateral cervical neutral load. Notice how basically we're just telling posture what images are what. There's a lateral lumbar. So I just go down to lateral lumbar, load, and we'll do lateral thoracic. You can see my problems there. OK, now at this point, what you want to pay attention to when we pull images in, um, if you're using your own x-ray server, this probably won't be a, an issue. But if you're getting images from an outside source, pay attention that one of the ways we can make sure that this is accurate is we can calibrate uh, using the DICOM format. We have known parameters inside that image file. So I know the true dimensions of the film right here. You see that? So I can, at this point, if I'd like to, I'm going to crop this down a bit to make it kind of look like an 8x10. The plate was actually bigger. OK. And then what I, I would do is we could go in and I could go ahead and hit AP cervical. Hit yes. And then I can hit APOM. Notice I could crop this down still. And always pay attention. Is that on the correct side? If it's not, you can flip the tool. OK. I'm going to um, crop this down to more of an AP cer uh, APOM. OK. So it appears larger for digitization. That's up to you. It's clinical on what you want to do. And oops, got a little trigger happy there. Um, and notice that we got the APOM. Notice that these are all need to be verified. We always want to face the lateral views to our left. Okay, I'll explain why as we go, but they're always going to be facing to the left. It doesn't matter if the doctor wants to view his x rays to the opposite side, you do not get a choice. Okay. Um, because it doesn't really matter when you're digitizing anyway. If the doctor wants to view the images when they're done, viewed backwards, that's not a problem. We can, of course, flip the images. And we can export them flipped so the doctor, if they're used to looking at them uh, anterior to the right, that's not a problem. Okay, but for digitizing purposes, you always will load the films this way with the right on the doctor's left or the CA's left. Okay, and we're going to make sure the laterals are all facing the left anterior. OK, um, I'm not going to crop this one down because that's essentially a lateral uh, a 14 by 17 film. OK, so that is how to load images using the DICOM format. Um, alternatively, we could, if I went into a new evaluation, let me just go in and just say this. this is a new evaluation for Joe. Um, let me search for search for me. This is good that you can see how to do this. I'm going to click right next to my name, hit New Evaluation. Um, I'm going to say it's a Today X-ray, even though it's not going to be my X-ray. If you want to pull in a loose DICOM digital format image, you're going to go ahead and I'm going to say it's obviously it defaults to re-exam. Uh, but let's go ahead and say it was a, we'll put it other type, we'll say it's a new whiplash. OK. And I'm just going to load the lateral cervical. We can just browse with a loose DICOM file. If I click DICOM, I could browse to image paths. So let me go ahead and I'm going to go to my desktop here. And I have x-ray folders, which we have uh, sample x-rays. And I have sample x-rays right here. I have some DICOM images. OK, so if I scroll down, these are just some loose ones that are from different various people. But I want to show you something here. These aren't really my my um, 
my x-rays that's why I'm loading them this way I just want to show you there's an alternative method of doing this so if I wanted to load this person I can hold down a control or, sh or, or shift I'm gonna hold down control and click let's do these three images and we come up with this screen now notice on this we got the format of A B C D E F these are just different grayscales that are presets you see that so I can go through and find out what looks the best that one doesn't look very well that one's too dark that one looks a little too white if I go back to A that one looks a little grainy so let's go back to B overall that looks pretty good so I'm gonna say that this is a lateral cervical and this is what I mean these are images from another facility so their compression levels are different and that's why the images you got that choice so let me go ahead and do a an extension even though this is not my x-ray I just I'm walking you through a mental process on how this works that what your staff will do okay and when this is done now what did I say about the anteriors we always face to the left okay um, we can crop this one down if we want to. I, I could go ahead and I could crop it like right here if I want to. Hit yes and OK. And let's go ahead and do deflection. I'm just going to keep these the same size here just for time's sake. Notice I'm flipping the image. There we go. OK. So at this point in time, we can hit save. We don't have to digitize at this point in time. OK. Um, so as you can see we have this all ready to go let me just get this out of here um, so what we can see is that we have flexion extension views for this patient it just so happens to be me it's a new whiplash injury right um, I just hit save and then I'm all done now I want to show you while we're importing images if you have a plain x-ray that you took a digital picture in this is how you would import those images you have to save them to your hard drive so you can see that if I went in sample images you can see I have a folder of just various images right you can see the, these various images so like if I did a if I pull up a lateral cervical you can see there it is and you can see the view box is back here so it's basically tape holding the image or the, the x-ray to the view box the one thing that you need to pay attention to is that if you're taking a photo you got to back up and if it's a point-and-shoot camera just make sure that the zoom is out probably about 50 percent but if you have a high-end DSLR with the you know the big lens you're gonna get pretty good images even if you don't turn off the lights in your room you should get a pretty good image but notice how I can see all edges of the film that is so important you must I repeat you must be able to see all the image sides routinely there's other ways you can calibrate but this is the best way so with that being said let's say that this was one of my x-rays okay so I'm gonna again go into new evaluation let's create a date we'll just say um, that, that it was a day before right because this was a, a new whiplash injury so we're gonna go into Joe Ferrantelli hit new evaluation I'm gonna change it here I'm just gonna just say that this was a follow-up x-ray okay let's do we'll just pull in a one x-ray here actually I'll do an AP and lateral cervical so I'm gonna select one of these this time I'm gonna choose JPEG that's the image format photo okay and just make sure that this is still going okay sorry about that so now what we do is we browse to those images and here we can see there's an AP cervical so I'm gonna just hold down a control button so that when I'm ready to select the next one and let's do this lateral cervical so it doesn't matter where you save them but what I would do routinely is I would take a picture of the x-ray jacket with their name the date their date of birth um, any other information then take pictures of all their x-rays then the next patient starts with the next x-ray jacket that way everything's in order you don't have to manually name everything like what I did here um, I just did this for tutorial purposes now you'll see you get that same screen that comes up and I'm gonna do an AP cervical right so I go in here AP cervical load and then you can see I got two images that are loaded so let's go ahead and do that and then lateral cervical neutral and then we're gonna hit load now when we hit OK we get a different a slight alteration in the screen 
At this point, we have to say what size of the f is the film, Doctor? Is it 8 by 10, 10 by 12, 7 by 17, 14 by 17, 14 by 36, or do we want to put in our own millimeters measure? I'll go into the secondary calibration at another uh, training, but at this point, this is paramount that they do not make a mistake here. You must drag these points into place to fit around as best as you can around the full x-ray, and I'm going to come down just like that. Then we're going to click this guy right here. It's going to straighten and measure. And now we calibrated that to a known distance of an 8 by 10. So now it's accurate. We hit OK. And if I go to the AP, AP cervical, same thing. So this is a 10 by 12. I just happen to know that. And I know that this is the right side. So what did I tell you? We want to make sure we view it the other way. Flip it for digitization. I want to crop down right like this to the x-ray, not the collimation, but rather the x-ray. So now once we have that done, we pull that in and then hit OK. And at that point, I've imported several films. Um, and it, again, if we wanted to check where we were at, if we just hit View Evaluation, and let's just narrow this down so that way you can see. Fair and telly, when I look at this, we have initial x-rays, we have follow-up whiplash, um, practitioners, postural chiropractic, uh, you could have your name there. Notice that when we look at this view evaluation, if I look at this data service, um, notice that there's no blue boxes. That means they're loaded and digitized, where when they have a blue box around it, it shows you that they still need to be digitized. Okay, And we'll show you that in subsequent trainings. So hopefully that makes sense on how to load images, and your staff can absolutely do this part. Um, there's no reason why a staff member cannot load x-rays. They just need to make sure that the right ones, and doctors, please do double check that they are the correct x-rays. Posture is an EMR system, and it's only as good as those that are putting in data. Um, with that being said, any questions, please email us at info at postureco.com or browse our training area. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next training.